Well, with shocking speed, it has become normal on the left to demand the abolition of ICE and the 20,000 agents who work there and enforce our immigration laws. Just a few weeks ago, it was only a few activists on the far left who were calling for this. And then this week on Tuesday, congressional candidate Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won a Democratic primary against Joe Crowley in New York. She ran on abolishing ICE. And now, in a flash, ambitious Democrats are scrambling aboard the bandwagon. Last night, for example, Senator and career opportunist Kirsten Gillibrand of New York said that she favors abolishing ICE, the opposite of her opinion from a few years ago. Kamala Harris of California says she's open to that as well. Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, has also called for abolishing ICE. So I have seven Democrats in the House. This is gathering steam, this idea. And yet no one who's advocating for it seems to be thinking, even for a moment, about what the effect would be if we abolished ICE. For example, as we speak, millions of people want to enter this country. The entire city of Tijuana, Mexico, is already filled with tens of thousands of would-be asylum seekers from all over the world, Central America, Africa, everywhere, as well as as many as a half a million people who've been deported from the United States. The net effect, Tijuana is not a pleasant place to live. What will happen when word gets out that nobody in any country on the globe has anything to fear from our immigration authorities? If you can make it past our border patrol and get a tourist visa, you can overstay and you can never be deported. Once people know that, how many people will move here illegally every year? A million? Five million? Ten million? Who knows? How many of them might be criminals or extremists or future welfare dependents? We don't know that either. We do know it won't be long if that happens until dozens of U.S. cities resemble what Tijuana looks like right now. None of these new anti-ICE lawmakers seem to be asking any of these questions. They don't seem to care what the answers might be because they're irrelevant. They know that if we abolish ICE and our borders become irrelevant, they'll get what they want. A new body of voters who can shove aside the troublesome people who are already American citizens. The people demanding the abolition of ICE aren't looking out for those. Ordinary Americans don't want ICE abolished. A new poll from Harvard shows that even 60% of Democrats don't want ICE abolished. It's a radical position, but it's also the new normal on the left. Enrique Acevedo is a Univision anchor, and he joins us. Enrique, thank you for coming on. So ICE, in addition to the many things that it does, of course, it, it arrests and deports thousands and thousands of criminal aliens, illegal aliens in the United States who've been convicted of felonies, and it deports them. That is its job. No other agency does that. If we abolish ICE, who will do that? Well, I think part of the problem is that there's a lot of confusion about what ICE is. And the confusion in part has to do with the fact that many people believe that their job is, as you were describing in your introduction, to try to uh, stop immigrants when they want to come through the border. That's the Border Patrol's job. That's not ICE. ICE's mission has to do with human trafficking. It has to do with, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, prosecute the companies that are hiring and exploiting undocumented immigrants in the United States. And part of the problem is that it has stayed away from that mission and it's not only focused on mass deportation. But again, ICE, and you may not agree with everything that ICE does, but if we abolish ICE, who will arrest the thousands and thousands of convicted felons who are in our country illegally, who will interdict the fentanyl that's flowing across our borders from Mexico? Who will fulfill those roles? Who will protect the country? No one seems to be answering that. Well, First of all, the vast majority, I would say 80% of those arrested by ICE are people who have no criminal records. They're not rapists or murderers. They're not criminals. They're just undocumented immigrants. They're only... But I'm not, I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying that there are a lot of criminals. And what will so we... Do? I, I understand. I understand. We can debate whether, you know, that should be a crime that we prosecute for. But we do know that there are, as Donald Trump said, and roundly mocked for saying it, there are actually rapists who come in. I'm not saying there are millions of them, but there are some. There are thousands of convicted felons in this country legally. Without ICE, do we just let them stay? I mean, what is the answer since the left is calling for the abolition of ICE? I don't know if there are thousands of them, and I'm sorry about the wind. We're in a, a high uh, rise here in Mexico City. But I don't know if there are thousands of them. I would say 
There are some cases, and then we have police officers, we have law enforcement that can take care of that. I don't think ICE has to be worried about that. Like I was saying, it has to be worried about human trafficking organizations, about companies that are employing and exploiting undocumented workers that are attracting a lot of undocumented immigrants into the U.S. and not focusing solely on separating families and on uh, mass deportation. So, like in other words, doing right now. in other words, you don't, you don't, you don't care really what happens uh, to those criminals within our borders. I mean, that's uh, of course the the answer. Let me ask you a more basic question: Should someone who overstays his visa to, in the United States be right deported? Is, you, I think you, we can use our resources much better, much much better. Okay. So if you overstay your visa, you get a tourist visa, come to the United States, and this happens, you know, hundreds of thousands of times annually, and you ignore the length of your visa, you're here illegally, should you be deported? Well, of course, I think if you are in the country without documents right now, uh, you should have to follow the right process. And the process right now goes for deportation. This is the thing. There are millions of people in that situation. Who do we deport first? How do we start? Do we deport families that have been here for 15, 20 years, obeying the laws? Or should know. we start by people who have committed a crime? That should be the focus. But, but uh, maybe, maybe, focus hold on, but maybe we, that should be the focus with, without ICE, Again, we're not going to be, hold on, without ICE, we're not going to be deporting people who have committed crimes. So I'm asking on the other end, can we even deport people who've overstayed their visas? Let me ask you this. If illegal immigration makes a country so much better. You have to make a choice. If importing you have poor resources. people from the third Who do world. Who you report first? Okay. We, we actually I don't have very, no, we can afford this. But I want to ask you, though, if importing a lot of poor people from Central America makes your country better, why hasn't it made Tijuana better to have thousands of Central Americans there? When was the last time you went to Tijuana, Tucker? Because I'm happy to go with you. We can go next week. They have incredible restaurants. The city is, uh, you know, much, much better than it was a couple of decades ago. It's uh, Oh, no, no, I, I grew up next to Tijuana. I've, I've been there a lot. I've been, tech, hold on. I've been there a lot. To, incredible okay. establishment. So let's go to Tijuana so you can see it's not the horrible place you just described. Look, what, 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 I'm not saying it's a horrible place. What I'm saying is that there are hundreds of thousands of people in Tijuana in legal limbo. Mexico doesn't want to let them stay. And my question is, why not? If having undocumented immigrants, as you describe them, in your country makes your country better, then why doesn't Mexico give them all Mexican citizenship tomorrow and let them vote in the upcoming presidential election? Real question. Well, a couple of things. First of all, since Donald Trump became president, Mexico has deported over 200,000 immigrants to Central America. 200,000. That's 200,000 immigrants that could be at the U.S. border today. So Mexico is doing something to stop undocumented immigration from flowing to the U.S. Those who decide not to stay in Mexico don't stay not because the Mexican government is asking them to leave. They're deciding to go to the U.S. They don't want to stay in Mexico because they're fleeing violence. And like we've discussed before, Mexico is not exactly a safe haven when you want to flee violence. Well, no, but, but wait a second. There were 1,800 murders in Tijuana last year. 1,800 murders. If, again, having hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants from Central America in your city makes it better, then why did you have 1,800 murders last year? I mean, Talker, you know I the point I'm making, which is in the US it that actually have a higher makes... murder rate than Tijuana. No, actually, you can't. That's not true. You cannot name 10 cities in America with a high... Name them. Uh, there aren't. There well, aren't 33,000 people die so each year because of gun-related violence in this country, look, right? Look, look, well, look, 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 let me just say this. Do you really believe... 33,000 people die each year because of gun-related violence in this country. That's a fact, isn't it? The majority of those are, the majority of those are so suicides. So the U.S. is also okay? a very violent just, country. I mean, it, it, and there are also many right, cities that have okay. violent crime, like look, Chicago, like Detroit. Okay. None well, of them are in the no border, by the way. There's no reason to for Mexico. There's, there's, there's no reason to, to, to be a PR agent for the country of Mexico here. You don't need to defend Mexico. I'm just asking you a, a question as someone who understands Mexico. No, of course not. You know as well as I that when you have an influx of poor people with low education levels and no jobs, it does not make you richer. It makes you poorer. So why are you pretending that the United States benefits from taking in millions of poor people with low education well, levels? I can think of many examples of immigrant families that came to the U.S. with nothing and then became dynasties. The Kennedys, for example, from Ireland, which I think is also the country of uh, your, your family's uh, uh, background. So 
you know, that's just one example, the Rockefellers. Many of them came to the U.S. without a penny in their pocket, and they became dynasties. Yeah, Some of the I'm actually not Irish, but that's, but that's not the, the point. Country. So that's, the that's point. not exactly... Okay. Uh, so, okay, so... No, but you were saying that true, people, just, people, wait, you know, when, you come, uh, when they come into the country... Uh, uh, what I'm saying is they're, they're very impressive immigrants. I would never deny that. I know a lot of them, and they're great people, and I'm glad they're here. But when you import millions of poor people into your country, your country gets poorer. Think so from Let's be honest. Let's stop lying about it. Yeah, okay. No, this is a reality-based show. No, it's good for the Thanks economy. You, Immigration is good for the economy, Tucker. And it's, you know, yeah, widely it's great, proven. It's, right? it's been great for Tijuana. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're kicking them out. Great. Great to see you. Thanks very much.